Hey guys. Uh, all right, I think we have the mic on. And let me know how the audio volume is. Um, who is this W you are talking about? And uh, now let me post on Twitter, let everyone know that we are live and that they can join us. By the way, thank you all for coming here. Hello, La Travis. Jet user, main GI, let's see who else is here. So anyway, today I wanted to set up, hold on, let me set things up. Okay, Jet user says it's just fine and since it doesn't look like there's anyone else here, so I'll have to take his word for it. So today uh, we'll be talking, kind of comparing different approaches to um, the edge detection algorithm and talk about what works and what doesn't. Ah, yeah, like Travis, uh, let me know if the, I, I'm assuming the audio is fine, but um, why is this, oh right, because there's no X dot. Uh, half yeah so basically what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna I want to set up okay so we are going to do let's do a you know what let's do five by five pixels so and we'll we'll look at the grid so anyway um, you can see here this is No, 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 let's, uh, I meant 20 by 20. So right now I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to sample uh, pixels for edge detection shaders. So now imagine this, like where the thick lines are, that's, uh, that's one pixel. So, and let's, we'll make the blue, um, it's actually not just the shader code that that does that so this is the blue pixel right so this is the this is the pixel we're looking at at the moment and we want to see if this is an edge or not now there's a number of different approaches to this one is to oops You can do the X method. Um, fuck. Um, the X method is we basically take. No, no, we'll start with the cross method because I started drawing that. Is to compare like this one with that one and this one with that one. I guess another one is you can do X where you compare, oh, you know, so actually I just realized this is a little bit confusing because I'm actually, So we can compare like, right, so this is, this is X. We're comparing the pixels just next to it um, to see 
if it is an edge or not. This is cross. This is edge. So this is this is this. Is, sorry, that was cross. This is X. Can't think and talk at the same time. So in X, we are comparing this one with that one. We're going diagonal. I am thinking of doing a, an additional one, which is circle. And that would basically just be, we. it would be a combination of cross and, um, and X. And I think there's a, so there's a number of different ways, right? I mean, basically, if you're using depth and normal values to do your edge detection, the thing is you want to compare if something has if like so let's say you're comparing this pixel to that pixel and if the if the depth value difference is bigger than um why is your cursor so misaligned from where it's drawing i think that's just a photoshop thing like i hate doing pixel art but it always does I think it 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 uh it picks like the lower one to do it. Um, I don't really do pixel art or anything, but so the idea is that right. Basically, if you're doing you're doing edge detection, you compare these two pixels, and if the difference is beyond a certain threshold, you decide that it's um, an edge. Now it's tricky with depth. It's the top left of the brush. No, it's not. It's the bottom right of the brush. It's the bottom right of the brush. Right, so basically what you want to do is you want to compare... No, it's just that it's 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 the bottom right of the brush is where it, it aligns to. So, um, right, so if you're comparing these two pixels and the depth is beyond your threshold, then you decide that it's an edge. And what's tricky about it is that um, just because there is a big edge difference, huh, interesting. Maybe you can let me know the setting. This is an official build of Photoshop. I have Adobe Cloud. Um, I am like super zoomed in. This is at 3,200%. Um, so, okay. So the, the tricky thing with doing that depth thing is that then, let's say this is, uh, I have got this notebook, right? Now, if you're looking at it like this, there's going to be a lot of difference in depth values from pixel to pixel, right? Because now if you're, if you're looking at it flat on now, the depth value of this is the same as this. But if you're doing it this way, all of a sudden now these two points that used to be the same, now one is much farther away. And so the depth value is a lot bigger. So sometimes you end up getting so you'll actually see, and that is an artifact that you'll see when I'm um, sort of in the shader I've got, because because it um, you'll see when you're sort of looking at walls at an angle farther out, there you have these like big black patches, and to be perfectly honest, I don't really have a solution for that yet. Now, one thing you well actually, as I said that, I just realized I could I do have a solution. You could as you go further out increase the threshold slightly maybe hmm yes yeah you could you could have the sensitivity to depth and the depth you can have the actual depth threshold be based on depth itself interesting huh So I might do that. Um, the other thing is, 
let me okay anyway the other thing is to use the you can also compare the normal values now the normals are a lot easier in this game because you know everything is a box right so i don't have any curved geometry if you have curved geometry it's a little trickier because the normals are a, kind of a gradual change i don't know if i have anything round here i have this uh this xbox 360 controller so anyway you can see the inside this is curved right so that's not that you would want to draw an edge there but if you're using um if you're not careful you can end up having edges all along here because technically every point along this curve is uh has a slightly different normal so you have to you know you'd have to raise your threshold there so so the difference has to be much bigger where you draw the um the depth the lower or raise the threshold you have to play with that but um so anyway so so the nice thing is i'm using both normals and depth values and the edge detection shader So, um, so anyway, one thing I'm thinking of doing is having, I want to compare to see if different sampling methods work well. So we have, this is circle where we actually would compare all of them. Now there's actually like a number of different ways even with these can work so um slow day today in here yeah i don't know what's going on you guys gotta you guys gotta retweet my tweets about the stream get other people to come um oh, we're just getting started but that's okay actually because i don't Maybe it's a good day. Maybe it's a good thing that it's a slow day in here because I don't actually want everyone to know about my edge detection shader. Um, so, right, so if you're using cross, like what you can do is compare. What the heck? By the way, anyway, if, if you if you have all have ideas about it, I'd, I'd love to um, do let me know. Alright, so... I don't know, you guys think it's the handle change? I don't think it's a handle change. Everyone should just come over. Anyway, uh, uh, so, so with this, there's like, um... Now, there, there's two ways to sample, right? Like, you can, you can see if this a piece on the left and this piece on the right if they're different um, and you can compare these two so that's that's one way to do it another way is to add all four of them and see and then average it out though I th actually like add all the red ones together divide it by four and then compare it to the one in the middle the problem there is you could have these being just opposite enough that it cancels out So maybe I shouldn't do, so maybe that actually isn't a good way. Cause like right now I do have, um, I was gonna set it up so you would have four of these, like you would do cross, cross, average, center, X cross, X cross, average, center. 
And I, I think maybe I actually don't want to do average center. I think I just want comparing opposite ends. So, so circle, the circle method would basically be a combination of both X and cross. Huh. Anyway, yeah, I think, actually, now that I think about it, I think, I do think the center of me method is actually not that good um, because it does allow for the potential of things canceling each other out. So it's better just to compare the difference with this and this. Um, no, that that's totally cool with Travis. That's, um, I do that with some of the other dev streams as well. Um, so, yeah, you know what? In, in fact, actually, now that I've thought about it and I'm voiced it out, I've been doing the adding a bunch of pixels, dividing them by the number of pixels we sample from and comparing to the center. And I think that's actually not that good. So we should do only, we should do one-to-one -one comparison across the center pixel. And then... Okay, so cross, we're doing this one and this one, this one and that one. So that's one comparison, another comparison, X, one comparison, another comparison. So circle, we basically would be doing both of them together. Um, okay, so let me just go inside the shader itself and actually just add those points. So that's one zero minus one zero O dot UV. UV plus sample times XY times half to zero one O dot UV eight equals to UV plus sample times XY times half to one zero. Okay, what I'm going to do now is let's go into the game and I can just show you guys. Oh, so I'd love to get your opinion too on whether you think the, um, on what you think of the even lines versus the far away lines. Okay, so this is, you know, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this. This is kind of how the game has looked like for a long time. Um, show edge first panel, edge perspective panel. And again, if this is new, this is um, this is the uh, well, you gotta you gotta see it in motion first. So this is um, this is my debug console. I think everyone here has seen this before, but this is my debug console, which lets me enter some console commands to do other stuff. MIDI adjust edge purse. And by the way, uh, if you didn't catch last yesterday's stream, it's up on YouTube. Um, just hit me up on Twitter if you want a link. But I went over how I'm using... Um, I went over how I'm using a MIDI controller to tweak values. All right, so, okay, so this is this is uneven, right? This is how uneven edges have appeared. Now, this is even. So basically, the uneven was due to, I, I, I do two tests in uneven. First, I check to see normals. And uh, if, if the normal test passes, then we 
check to see depth. Uh, the reason why you want to do a combination of both normals and depth is because normals alone, so normal is really good at this. This edge right here, this is very, very good for normal because here, the, the normal of this face and the normal of that face are very different. Now, normal fails, though, when you are looking at stairs like this. You see that? These lines, that's all depth. Because looking down on the face of those sets, each of those faces have exactly the same normal. So if you're just using normal values, you are going to lose those edges. Um, uh, by the way, so now you can kind of see there's some of the black stuff. Um, but, but the depth has other problems as well. So anyway, so this is doing two tests. So this is doing the normal test and the depth test. And what happens is some of those lines, they pass both the depth and the normal test. So they actually end up getting drawn twice. So that's where you can kind of see that the lines are slightly different. Now, the one thing I don't like is that you get that bunching there. You see here, it's a lot cleaner. But it also doesn't look as impactful. Like, And I don't know if just because I've been looking at the uneven lines for so long, but this feels really... I mean, couldn't I just raise the sample distance? So see, but raising the sample distance causes... But the thing is, I'm also... I think I might be doing uh, adding four colors. You know what? So this is where, again, I would need to run a test because I think this actually, this so this looks actually more hand-drawn, but the problem is I think this is, um, I think I'm doing the average test here. I think I might be doing the average test here, um, which, so you can see that it's missing a few s spots. But you know, it's not just the, um, it's not just the line thickness, right? Like, I think... See, that's the thing. I don't know. Like, this versus this. This is thick, even lines. You still lose lines when you're on your edge on with the camera. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. So yeah, you see, this gives me, this actually gives me really nice lines. I can change the sensitivity. Oops, the, the color threshold went negative. Let's go outside. I think it's because I'm doing the averaging test. And I think it doesn't... So yeah, like, look at that, though. You see how, you see how like, how much, like, extra lines I'm getting out there? You see that? Right? Look, look, I'm getting all that... Hmm. This is kind of a cool look. What? Whoa, guys. Okay. I have to take a screenshot. This is actually kind of a cool view. Hey, maybe if I do this, people won't compare my game to Antichamber as much. Yeah, what do you guys think of negative mode? <laughs> I think it's too late to change.
Hey, that looks freaking cool, man. No. There are still, there's still, um, there are still, uh, artifacts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It looks too stylized. I think I'd have to save it for another game. Huh. Maybe. <laughs> it looks like it's being built um, as we're going down. I don't know though, you know, I am loving the gradient. It's not really Z fighting. That's the problem. Uh, that is true. I think it's too late to make a big, to make like a big, uh, too, too late to make a big change like this. It does look cool though. But anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's. Oh, interesting. So yeah, you know, I, I think we'll probably just keep it as like a debug option. Um, but we will... So yeah, it seems like the color sensitivity, I really want it at like... Yeah. So anyway, I think it also has to do with, um, with the, with it, it's doing, but, but see, look at that. Can you see it moving? Can you see how much, like, how much, like, uh, static there is in the movement? I don't know if it's coming across the stream. Main Jai, what's line? Is that the iPad game? Yeah, like I think, I think what I want to do, the thing is, yeah, oh no, 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 wait, 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 I think, I think I've played Line. I think it is on mobile, in fact, I think I met, I think the guy that made Line, his name is Tom, 
and I met him at Indiecade. I think Lion was at Indiecade, and I met him at Indiecade and again at GDC. The texture flickering is not in mesh issues. That's that's my shader. Oh right, right there, there that that this is overlapping mesh. I was talking about more stuff like this. Like if you look at the windows, and I move right, you see those lines. They they there's like the there's some like flicker with the lines. Yeah, but like which one? I don't know. Even? Uneven. I don't think it's fair to compare though, but let's let's raise the um Yeah, no, that looks ugly. I think I think I don't I don't think I should be doing Yeah, this looks awful. I don't think I should be doing um Dread so wow, it just looks like a lot of detail fighting for screen space. Yeah, like hmm. I'm just trying to think. I, I like I'm wondering if I should be changing my the algorithm depending on how far away something is. Like people say, like I think this here, okay, at this distance, this uneven lines looks way better. Like thicker lines looks way better than thinner lines. Or maybe not. Right, this... Okay, we're, we are getting way better detail here. Yeah, so like... Okay, so let, let's just look at the column and the window. And I feel like there, the bolder lines works better. We are... Let me see if I can... Um, I right, sorry. You see, I see. I see the look at the line. Uh, okay, look at the line at the base of this column. You see where my reticle is? Look at look at this edge. You see, I'm missing it, and I don't think I can get it. I don't think this method is giving it to me. Like I'm, I'm really fine tuning here. I don't, I don't think I get it until it. Yeah, you see that? It like. Like the face gets colored black before now nah, just the edge doesn't come up. So <sighs> Okay. So this so I think it should be Yeah, let's have variable width based on distance. Yeah, it really seems to be a distance from camera kind of thing. Anyway, you could make lines thinner at a distance and have it increase. Yes, uh, I think it would just be, we'd have to do, um, you can change the sampling depth based on distance. Now, I, I do think what I should do is change, okay. I definitely think closer, this is better. And farther away, I, I think I know what game you're talking about. Someone's actually sent me some screenshots, Dretzel, wow. Like, okay, so this is a good, good example. Actually, you know what, hold on, let me, let me get down here. Okay, so this is a, I wanna get like a, a window that's close and one that's far away. And I think this is a good example, cause, Okay, guys, so so let's, we'll, we'll talk about it like there's the first set of windows, which is the closest to me, second, third, you know, moving upwards. Yeah, 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 that's, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, slag, blast, what music are you talking about? There's no music here. Um, all right, so... But not increase the width. 
I mean, I can do this without actually changing the um, the sample distance, right? Like, actually, both of these are great right now. They, yeah, but they both have the same sample distance. The reason why the closer lines look thicker is because of the specific edge detection algorithm we're doing. It's it's passing through the test twice. It's passing through both normal and depth. Hence, it's being drawn twice. <laughs> All right, now that's cool. Slide blast. What what uh what stream are you on? We should be listening. Sounds like I should be having music from that stream here. By the way, thanks for stopping by, and uh, thanks for chatting, even though it's it was the wrong chat. Um, so, right, like I think right now, definitely the first one looks awesome with the amount of bolding. So, do you guys think? In, in the second set of windows, it should start being thinner. Like... But you kind of lose a lot of detail. Okay, well, anyway, you lose, like, I'm looking at these columns, right? I mean, right now I sort of lose the details anyway, but... This does get easier to see. I don't know, but it's like up there. Like, what's the, what's even the point there? That's just noise. Yeah, but like, on the second set, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess like this, you can have the uh, the visuals from this stream and then the music from another. I don't mind. Um. So, okay, change the line color to approach texture color the further away you get. I kind of do have that, I mean, you can see the colors are getting a lot lighter, but you're saying that I should increase the, uh... Thing is that that's not gonna make a difference. Changing the edge color, I think that's almost more or less the same. Wait, um, sorry, just to go up to the stream earlier, Jet User, you said I think the latter suggestion would look better. What's the? All right, see a slag blast. Um, you can make it an exponential drop off beyond a certain distance where the issue with the flicker starts. I, yeah, so like, I mean, a lot of it too depends on, so I, I think part of this right now is that the, the lines look a little thin and that, that's because I'm doing the four, four pixel sample, averaging that one out and compare it to the center pixel. So you can kind of see that it's missing a few in a few spots, right? Like, um, if I go back here and um, right, you can see it's not. Like, by the way, though, that's the that's the that's the algorithm. That's the artifact. Oh shit, it's, it's happening here too. Look at all the artifacts. Yeah, I should, I'm going to bold the lines uh, based on distance.
Yeah, whatever works. Okay, so now like, what about this part? So like, looking at this this section of the 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 level, does does this look better or this? Thin lines or thick lines? Because I kind of like the thick line look right now. What's MXAA? If you're really far away, it actually really doesn't matter, right? I mean, like, look at not, not this layer, but the one after it, it's like, it makes no difference, really. So it's really this mid-ground. I mean, imagine if we combine this, like, Jai, what, what do you mean by the solution, not good mid-ground? I'm going to open up Photoshop, and we can just compare these images. That's not what I wanted to open. What the heck? Did I not take screenshots? didn't uh Two pass draw, that's expensive though. Depth dependent blur, interesting. I think no, I would need to do two pass. Cause you need, it's like in the first pass, you don't know the next pixel whether it's an edge or not, right? It like, like goes across like that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Screenshot it. Yeah, it might be crazy over engineering. It's also like when you start doing uh, edge detection, like blurring is also really hard to get it to work right with edge detection, I think. So what I was thinking of doing was
Ja. I think this could work. Can't keep working on the shader though. I have to work on the game too. It's a problem, but I think definitely we're getting close. And uh, I think the game, like, I think I'm just gonna do one more test. We'll do, hopefully I can get that ready by tomorrow, tomorrow stream. I'll work on it today. I mean, I'm pretty exhausted, so I think I'm gonna go to sleep right after the stream, but I think tomorrow during the day, what I'll do is I'll work on having all the different um, sampling methods inside so we can compare X versus cross versus circle, just to see if that makes a difference. Uh, like, I think, I think the circle is too strong, and so it's getting rid of some places, and it's losing out on the edges. And then what I want to do is start implementing some depth-based thing to change how it's being sampled. So, so that what we get is thinner lines further out in distance, and, and there should be a way to adjust all that. Yeah. Anyway, that is the shader work. Oh, so I know I said I was going to announce a new name next week, but uh, I don't have, I wanted to have like a bunch of really great looking assets in time and uh, it's just not ready. So we're going to have to wait. Oh, hey, thanks so much, Dread Soul. Wow. Uh, yeah, Phil Phil is awesome. He's, uh, he's here in Chicago. Funny story is um, I actually sent, uh, I met Phil. Phil and the Young Horses, they made Octodad. They're, they, they are, I guess they probably did the first playtest of this game. Uh, I've been working on this one version for about four months, and it was the world rotated instead of the player, and I went and I showed it to them at their office. And it was just like a total disaster. Uh, but it made me like go back and rewrite everything and change my approach, which was super, super helpful. Um, uh, and yeah, by the way, that reminds me, if any of you are, are new and are enjoying the stream, definitely hit follow. Um, we've changed uh, Twitch channels. Um, this is it. It's not going to change anymore, but our numbers are a little low because of that. But anyway, so that is... That's the shader stuff, and I think I'm going to. We're just that's just going to be this continuous refinement process. Usually, how I found the shader to work is I do something and it gets a little bit better, like just tiny, minute improvements, and then we go and work on the game design. And then, like six months later, I'll come back and I'll tweak the shader a bit more, and then it gets a little better. And that happens. Every time, and I think by the time, and I, I feel like we're we're so close. Like now, it used to be when I was working on the shader, I just had absolutely no idea what was going on, and I was kind of like, I was just like randomly change values, uh, just to see what happens. Uh, it was like very much trial and error, and then, um, but now though, when I go when I'm changing the shader, it's like everything is intentional, right? Like. Everything we just talked about today, it's like, okay, I think this is happening. I mean, there, there's still some stuff which, you know, I still got to, like, try it. But the idea is that I'm basically doing, like, a series of A-B tests, and I'm writing that all into the shader, and I can say, uh, okay, we want to change the sample distance. We want to change the, the, the way we're doing the sampling. Uh, let's change the 
the weight that we are applying to death, you know, if we want to give more weight to... I do think I was... This was, was a... Um, I'm not 100% sure. I believe I'm reading... I'm applying like a logarithmic function to the depth so that... Uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know if Unity's depth comes in logarithmically uh, or not. I don't think it's linear, right? Because the thing is, the depth values, irregardless of view distance, always comes in as 0 to 1. So that means if you have a bigger view distance, your depth sensitivity is a lot lower than if you had a smaller view distance. And here in this game, I have a pretty high view distance. It's like 900. Uh, I think most people do like four or five hundred anyway. Um, so, so the depth values are not as sensitive as I would like, but I think if you do a logarithmic function, what you can do is make, is to shift the sensitivity to the closer stuff. So the closer stuff is more sensitive, which is more important, right? Because that's, that's really the stuff that people are looking at. However, there is, it is important that you be able to see the stuff that's out farther in the distance. Because uh, there are these kind of large scale puzzles and I do want you to get a sense of the scale of the level. So, so yeah, so there, there's always this balance, but I think using this MIDI controller, which I highly recommend, again, it's on the, um, it's on the YouTube channel, it's basically yesterday's stream, but that was a super, super helpful um, but using this has been super helpful in, I think, refining the, like, fine-tuning all the different values. Um, so, yes. Whew. And, by the way, on, um, on, uh, six... On, uh, what am I saying? On Friday, we're going to have uh, Happy Badger Studio here to talk about Smugglecraft. Again, that's our, our live game critique. Also, I think um, we're going to start doing this series, I think maybe on Wednesday. And I, I don't think it'll be every week, but maybe just like once a month to have an architecture focus talk. I don't I think, I'm guessing if you're interested in the game, that architecture, you're somewhat interested in it. Because this game is a lot about architecture. But um, thinking of having people who've actually studied it and come in and talk about the relationship of architecture to games, basically doing all the stuff that I would like, I was kind of hoping other people would do, but no one's really done that. So I guess we're going to do it and try to figure stuff out. But anyway, that is the Edge Detection Shader. Hopefully tomorrow we will, I will have another update on that. What the heck? save but yeah dread soul wow thank you i'm i'm uh yeah you know like i know for me because i didn't even make games until i started this one and there was a lot of resources that i didn't have that i really wanted to see uh so i'm kind of like i'm just sharing stuff because it's kind of stuff i wish was existed when i was there and you know like the anti-chamber blog i don't think it's up anymore but i remember reading much earlier on reading his blog and seeing like what he was thinking early on and that was really helpful like he went through a name change as well he also went through changing like tweaking the um edge detection style so i'm just like well you know let's let's just uh let's just share it um also you know I, I, well man i I think this uh, slider just fell off. Um, yeah, any game, the movie was a big inspiration, but you can't really expect someone to like come and make a make a documentary about me. Yeah, the Double Fine documentary, but they, you know, they're a much bigger studio, and they also had a massive Kickstarter, so they they are able to have a film crew. So since I do not have funds to pay people to follow me around with cameras. I figured I would just um, post about it here, so. But, um, yeah, and like even having this open development has been really helpful to me. Like, it's, I know, I think other people find it helpful, but for me, like, talking about the, um, the, 
kind of going over that edge detection shader has been really helpful and I kind of know, I have a, like a lot better idea of what I want to approach. By the way, we also upgraded to the latest version of Pro Builder recently. Uh, David Lasky spent like five hours doing that. There's, there's kind of a, it's a very tedious process uh, with the recent changes. You have to like, the lead probe, you have to like go through every scene, serialize everything, save it somewhere else, and then delete Pro Builder, and then go through every scene again, reimport it. We really need to find a better way to deal with that. Um, but now what I want to do is show you some changes to water. I'm going to end the stream a little earlier today, so it's not going to go until 10. I think maybe just like 5, 10 more minutes. Damn it. values here. See, I don't want both of them on. Would I consider the game low poly? No. I mean, it is low poly, but um, but it's not um, it's not like the low poly style that everyone thinks of. So I feel I feel just because there are expectations of what low poly style is, and my game doesn't actually fit in that definition, even though it technically is. Well, no, actually, you know why? Because I think low poly is like trying to represent a high detail, high level of detail, like taking something that's usually a high level of detail and doing the low poly thing to it. And that's not really what I'm doing. God damn. The frame rate, it's killing me. That's... Fifteen frames per second. Chris, this water needs to be optimized. But uh Yeah Yeah that water needs to get optimized, but uh I think Chris was saying that it now works with wool wrapping. What the fuck? All right, that water is actually taking way too long to come down. So we got wool wrapping with water working, but look at how long it takes to come down. You know, you can see the water being repeated. So you also should be able to like walk up this water as a bridge. Everything in this level is broken. And the frame rate is so slow. <laughs> oh god, my game is broken. It's so broken. Um, that is that. So, Do 
Too innovative. Ha, ah, thanks. Dread Soul, wow. Um. So yeah, that's that. Need to refine it. I am super exhausted, so I think I'm going to end the stream here tonight. Um, but thank you all for stopping by. If you enjoy it, uh, hit follow. Again, let me know your thoughts as I'm on Twitter at William Cheer. The website is WilliamCheer.com. The Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash William Cheer. We will not be changing it anymore. But um, yeah, I'll be on at 8.30 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. And I think hopefully we'll have some update with the water. And then I will also be showing... <laughs> ah, thanks. Yeah, we... Sorry about changing the channel names, but, um, yeah, and tomorrow we'll get the different sampling methods in the edge detection shader, and then we're also going to try to, I'm going to try to implement some, some depth-based, uh, stuff to, to see if we can get, uh, line thickness to change depending on distance. Um, but yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> the, the game is giving me a hard time every night. The game, the, game, the game has been giving me a hard time for like three years. But no, I mean, a lot of it is kind of what... Um, like, having been working on this for almost three years now, it's very much a cycle, right? Because it's like... Basically, every time you're rewriting systems... As you're like trying to improve things, you have to break things that were working before. And so you end up in this like weird spot where things that have been working fine no longer works. But you, and so everything is just broken, but you know you need to go through that stage in order for everything to be like really, really great later. Um, so by the way, that's, so that's kind of the wide, wide, the water stuff I've pushed back. The, the name announcement because I really wanted to have like great looking water um, and it just wasn't enough time it's like if to do the announcement on next Tuesday you know we have had to like all the assets done by Friday today's Tuesday and there's no way it's like to get the tech for the water to get all the aesthetics and then there's like the new name logo the website and all that is being held up and uh so yeah, making a game is a lot of work. But anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. You all have a good night. Thank you for stopping by. Really, really appreciate it.